Hey everyone, today's topic is a highly requested one, so here are my five top tips for dealing with extreme hunger in recovery from restrictive eating disorder. This is a topic that means a lot to me. I know personally that if I hadn't have listened to my extreme hunger and honoured it, all of it, I wouldn't be here today. So I feel like this is something that I am really passionate about talking about and sharing my experience of and just sending out some it's okay vibes. Um, if you're not sure what extreme hunger is, I have spoken about it before in a few posts and then there's also quite a long video on my Facebook page, the ISR Facebook page, where I did a Q&A on my 26 hour sofa marathon and I talked quite a lot in there about what extreme hunger is because there was a few questions about it um so yeah if you're not sure check those out but for now these are my top tips for dealing with it number one know that you are not alone you are not broken you're not addicted to food you're not going to turn into a lifelong binge eater you're not the only one it is okay your body needs that amount of food. It needs what it's asking you for. It needs a lot of food. If your body is asking for a lot of food in recovery, it's because it needs a lot of food. Okay? Trust it. Really, truly trust it. It will be okay. Number two. Get yourself, like I did, a tub. So... Basically, for my, like, biscuits and chocolates and sweets and all those kind of things, which was the main stuff that I really craved in my, with my extreme hunger, what I did is I got myself a tub. It was actually an old Fox's biscuit, big family sharing tin thing, and I finished it, eating the biscuits out, and then I used that. And what i do is I would put all those things in it, and then when I was wanting something, you know, when you... I don't know you finished your you finished your meal and your dessert and you've had sec you know you've had seconds of both of the courses and you're still like oh my god I'm so hungry and your brain is going like crazy and you you just want everything in your cupboard I could just go and get that tub out and then I'd just go and sit with it it was a big old tub piled high with all of the things that I wanted and was craving and I just you know if I suddenly fancied like oh I really fancy some Oreos or oh I fancy Rolos I really want Rolos I'd go and I'd get those or my mum would get them for me and then we'd just the the box the contents of it changed over time with the different things I was craving but the concept's the same having that tub that basically when you do really fancy something you can just go grab it and then just go and sit and I would often sit with a jigsaw puzzle or a colouring book or just playing on the PlayStation or something and I'd sit with this tub and I'd just graze and I would just eat as much of it as I wanted and honestly it was such a great thing for me to do because it stopped that whole oh I don't know whether I want this or what do I want and maybe I should have some of that or if I but if I have Oreos then I can't and all this and I'm not sure no it just got rid of it and an extra bonus thing is that if you are someone who struggles with number compulsions, like I spoke about in my last topic, then this is a really great way to implement the not seeing the numbers thing that I spoke about, you know, the whole getting rid of the packaging. Because what I could often do is I'd get the, you know, buy the packets of things and then just tip the biscuits all into the biscuit tin. So it was just like a great lovely pile of all the different things with no packaging and no numbers so I could just sit and I could just eat. And it was tough at first, like I've said all of these things, it's not easy at first, but honestly, when I started then just letting myself, and I owned it, I said, you know what, if I eat the entire contents of this tub, that's fine, I'll just fill it up again, and I'll just do the same again, and I really owned that, and there was no packaging, couldn't see numbers, eventually over time, I didn't care as much about that, you know, in the early times, my mum would actually take everything out of its wrappers for me, and then put it in the tub, so I didn't even have to look at any of it, and I could just eat it. And I could just tackle the process of just eating without having to think about all the numbers and without letting that be an extra point of leverage for my eating disorder. And so then, but then over time, actually then things could be in their packages. And now I don't even, like I said in the previous one, I don't even contemplate 
the numbers and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't come into things. Anyway, I'm going, I'm going off topic. I'm not going off topic today and it's not going to go really near to nine minutes. Although it probably is because we're already at five minutes. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, <laughs> basically that tub made a huge difference to me. It helped me to really own my hunger and stopped me spending ages and ages just staring into the cupboard trying to work out what I want when actually I just wanted everything. It helped me to own my hunger and that essentially is a really important part because you own the hunger, you eat as much as you want, you satisfy it. It doesn't matter if you've just had dinner, it doesn't matter if you're going to have a meal in an hour's time, like if you're hungry now, you eat. Okay, number three, don't torment your body with little portions on a plate. So I spoke about this in detail over the weekend in a couple of posts that I think, so if you haven't checked those out, go and check those out. It's all about abundance. And this is the process of changing the way in which you eat to show your brain that food is not scarce. What I mean by this is when I was first dealing with extreme hunger and I was fancying all these chocolates and cakes and biscuits and all these things that had been so like my eating disorder had just denied them for so long. And my brain now in recovery was like, hello, yes, custard creams. Like, all those lovely things. And the problem was then what happened is there was that conflict. And so I'd find myself getting little plates and I'd come back with like a plate with a digestive biscuit and a jammy dodger and three roller, whatever it is, like little, a plate. It could be a big plate, but it was always like little segments of food just around on the plate. The problem with that is that when your brain processes what it sees in front of it, it sees scarcity. It sees little sections of food and even if you sit and you eat that and then you go back and get more you're just bringing the same thing again and it kind of for me I felt like it really fed into that frenzy of oh my god I need more the food is scarce ah like don't need more do need more don't need more it was crazy and actually for me it made such a difference when I did have that tub I was a mountainous pile of food and I just sit there and be like yeah I'll have as much of that as I want and I just eat, and like my brain just calmed down. Like honestly, it it sounds like a small change, but it really did make a huge difference. And you may find that it's quite a difficult thing to do. The idea of sitting with a lot of, oh, I don't know if this is it's giving me the low battery sign. The idea of sitting with a lot of food next to you might feel difficult. And if it does, that's exactly the sign that you need to be challenging that. Right, I've got to keep talking. Number four, keep having your meals and your snacks as normal, as much as possible around your extreme hunger. What this means is if you have breakfast and then you get an hour later super hungry and say I'd gone and I'd eaten like half that tub, who cares, whatever it was, or I'd eaten, I don't know, a whole cheesecake or I'd eaten like the whole loaf of bread with peanut butter and all sorts of things on it all those things, whatever it was, I'd still then have a snack at whatever time I'd normally have had a snack. And then I'd still have lunch, a proper decent lunch, no compensation, no restriction at all, same as. And again, all the way through the day. So if you eat, if you find yourself eating a huge amount of food at night time, just make sure that you are getting meals all the way through the day do not find yourself scrimping at meals and snacks through the day and then having all of your food right at the end of the day like spread it out show your body and your brain that food is plentiful and number five this is so important rest a key thing with extreme hunger is resting right let your body Use the food that you're giving it and the brilliant job you are doing at nourishing it. Let it use that energy to heal. Like, don't find yourself, you know, yes, you're giving in to your extreme hunger and you're honouring it and you're doing amazingly and you're having all your fear foods, but then you're just buzzing around the house constantly and trying to find things to do or you're going out for a massive long walk or you're going to the, whatever you're doing, rest. It's okay now to rest. Like extreme hunger is a sign that you need to rest more, if anything. It's not a sign that you need to be doing stuff. It's a sign you need to rest more. And yeah, okay, so maybe you've got some energy. There are other things you can do with that energy right now, like jigsaws. I got really good at jigsaws. 
Channel that energy elsewhere and let your body rest. Marvellous. I hope this has been helpful. Take care. Bye.